feel like you don't just get into bike life just to get into it. It's like you're molded into it. Like I said, where I come from, was like people already ride in the street. So it's more like get good at it because that's what we're doing. Me personally, I was just born into it. It's like, yo, this is what you got. This is what you're going to do. That was my family business. Like when you get on a bike, bro, there's no other feeling. It's like jumping into a car and getting on the highway. So there's yeah. no other feeling, bro. So you know what I mean? So like that was us. Like we couldn't afford the nice cars. That was, you know, bikes were not that expensive, but it was yeah. in our means, you know? Was there anybody else on YouTube that you feel like, you know, on close YouTube? To? Nobody yeah. was with me on YouTube. Nobody at all. Not a single soul. Every match you have ever seen, if it's not all bone stock and like had one owner, they're pieces of shit. All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. You can't rebuild them to make you them. You can, but they suck. Bro, they all are trash. Boogie. Boogie's really good at chopping, yeah. Randy's better than him? Yo, Ran. Yo, I'm on a podcast, the Street Alpha podcast. Yo, you better than Boogie, right? 100%. Yeah, he said it, bro. He said it. You heard it from the man himself. He said he's better than Boogie and tuning, right? Bro, what? I got the fastest tune in bike life. Oh, shit. Are you ever going to see a time where you actually go back to doing bike content on YouTube at all? Welcome back to another episode of the Street Alpha Podcast. I'm your host, Toots, and we're out here in sunny Florida. Last episode out here, we have a couple episodes uh, that we shot, which are actually legendary. This one's a bit different, though. So a good friend of mine, known as Angel, you guys may know him as Brat Vlogs, is huge into the bike life. Yes. Now he uh, owns this beautiful property, a couple of different houses, Forex paid cars, and so on. So <laughs> try I know bro. him. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I know him from grinding on YouTube putting out videos every single day, working, working hard. None of the stuff that he has now is obviously paid for uh, by his, his family or whatever it is. This is hard work, hard earned money. You guys may know him for doing those crazy stunts on Instagram, willing. So uh, round of applause for Brat Vlogs. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, brother. So um, this is a bit of a different episode, yeah. but people have been wanting some bike life stuff. So I figured why not just hit you up and have you, you know, kind of is this the, is this the, the first, first dirtbag episode? Literally the first one. Man, that's crazy. First, I, feel, I, feel first special, first I feel special. I feel special to bring the bike life culture in. Oh, you look know, who showed up. You we got Rob over here. We don't have no behind the scenes cameras, but uh. yeah, we got Rob. We just showed up with the waters. <laughs> What's up, bro? Yeah, so I kind of want to talk about your background, how you, how you came up to you know obviously where you are now. Yeah, and um, you know what the ground was like coming from Philly. You Very know, big as, difference from yeah. you know before and after. You know, and you from, started recording in high school, like high school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started recording because of my girl. You know, I was on I was on YouTube, like just watching videos. I'm like, yo, I can do this one day. And she's like, yo, just do it. I'm like, I'm broke as fuck, bro. Like, <laughs> like bro, we're bro, bro, we're we're broke living in her in her in her mom's in her mom's house. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I wasn't living with my mom at the time. I was living with her mom. We were broke. I was working at Planet Fitness, bro, making like six twenty five an hour. Damn, it was bad, bro. Do people know this? Not a lot, bro. It, I mean, the people who watch my, my come up for years, they they all they, they knew that I was in the hood, you know, yeah. barely could afford anything that, you know, we were struggling, you know, at the end of the day. Right. So a lot of the, the OG fans know for sure and that follow me from the beginning, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people just see that the cars, the dirt bikes, the glamour, the, you know, the lifestyle. Yeah. And they think this shit was just like, oh, this is just gave it to them. Like, right. No, bro, this is nine years of hard work nine sure. years yeah nine years bro how many videos do you think you put out from like day one too because i remember when you hit a million subs you said it was like 1500 videos or something yeah like it's, i think we're almost like i don't i don't want to like lie but i think it was, it's either it's between a thousand to two thousand videos since i was 17 16 17 years old two thousand videos yeah. and you were editing them yourself i do i was doing everything myself the videos the content the ideas everything was just figuring it out by myself bro nobody because yeah. nobody one, when you come from, you know, the slums, nobody gives a shit about YouTube, right? Nobody right. cared about it. Nobody thought about it as a career. Even I didn't. I was, I, th I just thought it was cool. Yeah. I didn't even know you can get paid from YouTube. I just knew it was a dope thing to do. Right. I was like, I'm going to do that one day. And um, yeah, nobody really cared about it. It was just more like, yo, that, that guy's holding like, a camera up. That's it. That's literally what it was. But really, yeah, the young boy Angel just walks around with a camera all day. So. Yeah. So who are you looking up to at that time? Because obviously, you know, you have to have some inspiration if you want to start, yeah. you know, working hard to make videos on YouTube. So who are you looking up to at that time? Honestly, bro, it wasn't even a bike life, people. It was just the life, bike life thing was my lifestyle. I looked up like Lance 210, like all of the big like like Hollywood, you know, YouTubers from yeah. back in the day. Those were my inspiration because that's what I watched. Right. I watched all the people with the R8s and the lifestyle because that's what I wanted, bro. I've always yeah. wanted the Lamborghinis, the lifestyle, the big house, the cars, the dope family, the friends. I always wanted that. So I was like, you you watch what you want. Right. And that was just me. Like I, I manifest like, damn, I want to I want to have that one day. And that's kind of what I, I like was attracted to. So. so there was nobody at that time doing any type of bike content at all that you were looking at bro, like, to see like who was doing similar um, stuff? Before, I, I, didn't, I know there was this guy named Zach Goes. 
Okay. He had, but when I was when I was like at like a hundred thousand followers, he was like a million. But I never knew him. I, I never even seen his shit. Yeah. Back in the day, and then um obviously when we came up and I got a little bit bigger, it was just more like friendly competition with me and him. Right. But um other than that, no, there was no actual like YouTubers at least from my way that I watched. Yeah. Like, that no, it was just literally I came up. I was like, fuck, I'm gonna do it. How did you get into bikes? Was it a family thing? Or was your dad into Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. My dad, you know, obviously, once again, you know, where we come from, it was just like, there was nothing else to do. It was ride bikes, chill yeah. on the blocks, you know, just vibing, bro. The bikes have always been a thing. Like, every, like, big drug dealer had, like, a dirt bike. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I want a fucking dirt bike, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, like, think about it. When you when you see all the guys, like, you know, back in the day with big t-shirts, you know, yeah. flying up and down, they're like, that's cool, bro. I want to do that one day. <laughs> and I was like, yo, I'm going to have a dirt bike. And then my dad bought me a dirt bike. And bro, What was that bike? Was, what was the first bike you My first, or my first, like, real, real, real bike was a, I think it was, like, a YZ85. YZ85. Well, yeah, YZ, small, Yamaha. Small bike. Small bike, right? yeah, because yeah. I was little. I'm 5'7 I'm now. You know, back in the day, I was probably like 5'2, you know? It's fucking not even five foot, you know? So it was like, I needed a small bike, and that was like the, the bike we got on. That was like kick 65s and kicks 100s, and, you know, just moving up the ladder as I got better at riding. Right. Were you trying to stunt or you were just trying to ride? Bro, I just wanted to learn how to fucking ride like all the like all the drug dealers on the block. Like yeah. everybody was willing back and forth. It was like when you see things, like once again, when you see something, that's what you want. I was like, I want I want to be like that. So I just wanted to ride bikes and just be cool while riding. So I guess yeah. willing was being cool. So I guess I wanted to be cool. So you were you were with your girl already, right? Like that whole time. So yeah, I mean, through through the YouTube stage, yes. Yeah, like okay. before even YouTube to YouTube, I've been with my girl for almost nine years now, eight, nine years, something like that. Yeah. So it's been a while, bro. In a long time. It's been a very long time, yeah. But she's been super supportive, right? Hundred percent. She sold her car to give me a bike. The, your first, your my first, first like, like personal, like, my first personal bike. She sold her car to give me a bike. She's like, "Yo, you doing this YouTube thing? You want this? I'm gonna sell my car, and get you a bike." She sold her car. Sold her car, bike. bro. We still live with her mom, bro. She she sold her car, got me a bike, and we bought like a two thousand dollars smart car to drive around. I swear to God, bro. What? Yes, bro. Yeah, yeah. If you go on my, if you go down my Instagram, you'll see the smart car picture. We'll send it to you. You'll pop it up. <laughs> Yo, yeah, bro. Crazy. This is like no joke. Like, so that's that's my rider. She, she's the reason why I, I guess I'm here for sure. Damn, that's that's powerful. Yeah, shout out, shout out to to the powerful woman out there. Facts. Shout out to my girl. Yeah, shout out to Jordan. Shout out to all the, the <laughs> good women that support their men. Yeah, facts. Big fact. They sleep in the cars and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> facts. If you know, you know. Facts. So when you had that first bike that she got you. Do you think that she ever felt like it wasn't going to work out? Because you were like, you were just were ambitious and had a yeah, dream. Yeah, I was so. fooled. Honestly, bro, she was what, whatever. Like, I, I remember like, I'm going to skip a little forward, but I was like, we were already making some money on YouTube, but we can go back. And then I was like, yo, I don't know if this is going to work. Like YouTube, like they're cutting our checks down. Like, so we were getting paid a little bit. And I remember one, one YouTube cut down my check for like $4,000 one month. Think about it. If you're getting a $4,000 paycheck one month when you're used to a certain amount of money, yeah. that's a lot of fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's not a lot of money, right. you know? So I'm like, yo, I don't know if like all we can do is pay our bills. And she's like, yo, whatever you want to do, we with it. Like, you want to go to school? We go to school. You want to do this? We do this. So that 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 was like, nigga, we good. Like, no matter what, like <laughs> we can go from being rich to poor. I know like we're good no matter what. We solid. So, but that's me skipping forward. Yeah. But yeah, I she was cool, whatever. Like whether yeah. I was gonna stay in school to be a cause I was gonna go to school to be an anesthesiologist. Really? Before being a YouTuber. Yes. No, I have no nothing, I have no. I have nothing for the medical field. I hate the medical field. I hate anything about learning. I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. I'm yeah. not a book smart person. I'm going to keep it real. I'm not. Um, but I wanted to make money. I knew I wanted to be rich. So I was like, I'm going to be the highest paid something of some field. And I'm going to dedicate my mind to it. Right. And I'm going to dedicate my life to it. So before that, I was like, I'm going to do this YouTube thing. I'm going to give it one year. If it doesn't work, I'm going to go to school. I have to. I can't just stay out of school. And it worked. So <laughs> it fucking, fucking ended up crazy. working for me, bro. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. Shit. So yeah, I was, I was ending. I was in 11th grade. Going to 12th, and I was like, yo, I'm going to start this, you know, I'm, I'm going to take this shit full time. Yeah. Quit my job, and it, it kind of worked out for me. Yeah. That's fucking wild. My first YouTube paycheck was 69 cents. I got it in a little check. You get a little Google AdSense card. Back in the day, you get a Google AdSense card, and it said your first paycheck, yada, yada, yada yeah. on it. And it said 69 cents. I was like, holy fuck, if I can make 69 cents doing something for fun, imagine if I take it serious. That was my mindset, and that's my mindset on anything. Yeah. You know, going forward with any career, I'm like, oh, fuck it, let me just go full throttle and I did bro went from 69 cents to a thousand from a thousand to two thousand two thousand to ten thousand ten thousand to thirty thousand thirty thousand to seventy five thousand yeah and it went up from there that was it yeah so going to the, like the bike life in um in Philly you know was there anybody that was popular at the time that you know bro, I, you know the one thing back in the day I'm gonna say back in the day because I don't live there no more but the the culture in Philly was the best. Like, bro, you, you you know, there's a bunch of, you know, we all live in a hood. It's small. Yeah. So we all pull up, bro. And it was all friendly competition. It was lit. It was fun. It was vibes. Bro, you know, everybody was good. You know, everybody was, you know, there's some, there's OG people like um little Alex Boogie. Yeah. Um, right now, John Michael was like nasty. My little brother Fatty's like disgusting. But there's so many kids like, because like I said, there's really nothing to do 
but ride bikes. Yeah. So like there was, there's always really good people in the hood. And the culture was just amazing. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Does, do you know um what's his name? Leaky. Leaky Bike Star. Yeah. Really, really. He's good not friend. from Philly though. He's from New York. Nah, right? he's New York. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. in New York. Yeah, we was just in uh, St. Martin together. Oh, recently. And, yeah, it was in St. Martin. I think we was in Aruba too, and and Aruba. Yeah, it was in Aruba and St. Martin. Wow, yeah, some shit like that. And yeah. he's he's sponsored by like Monster or something like that, or is he still? I don't or? know. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I know he uh, he has his own clothing brand. He's a really you know humble guy. He's cool as fuck. Yeah, and yeah, he's really good at bikes. He's a, he's a good at riding. Did you guys ride together back then, or you guys kind of met through like out the fame and everything? Um, kind of met through the fame a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I went to New York to ride before. It was cool, but it was um we never really got together until like recently. Recently, right? Yeah. So at the time in Philly where like you were doing those videos and gopros and doing wheelies throughout mm-hmm. the city so can you talk about like what what it's like to even get into that because riding through those streets in philly is kind of like sketchy yeah know? it is it's crazy kind of now it's mad cars and everything you got so you gotta be you about that life that? bro you just gotta you gotta you gotta want it like you don't you know I, I feel like you don't just get into bike life just to get into it it's like you're you're kind of like molded into it like i said where i come from was like we're people already riding the street people yeah. already running from the cops so it's more like get good at it because that's what we're doing you know right. what i'm saying so me personally i was just born into it it's like, yo, this is what you got. This is what you're going to do. That, that was my family business. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Now yeah, people yeah. get built into their family business. Like, you're going to run this cigar shop when you get older. You're going to ride a dirt bike. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> you're going to ride a fucking dirt bike, bro. So how did you learn how to wheelie? Yo, so there was this one guy named Pre in the hood, right? He was one of the good. We was in the basketball courts. And um, my little, my mom bought me a dirt bike. It was a KX65 at one time. And he's like, yo, I was like, yo, can you teach me how to wheelie? He was like, yeah, bro. I learned in, I swear to God, like two hours. Two hours. Like two hours. I swear to God, bro. And you he held like, it. You held it for like. No, I wasn't good in two oh, hours. Okay, I but say. I learned the concept in two hours. Got like, you. Okay. And okay. nobody believes that. Yo, you really. I'm like, bro. I learned how to wheelie. I I went to the park, learned how to wheelie in the park, and left the park wheelie. Not good, obviously, <laughs> but I was fucking. I was I was wheelie, bro. So yeah, this guy named Prefin back in the hood. He uh, taught me how to wheelie, and um, ever since then, like I said, when I want something, I do it. Like I, I catch on real fast. Yeah. And um, I just every day I was on a bike. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Did you fall the bike bad at all? Hell at yeah, time? bro. I, I done. I cracked my knee in half. I uh, in the beginning though. I'm talking not like obviously. Oh, I'm not saying yeah, yeah. In the beginning, yeah. There's always falls. Always. I don't want to say bad. Okay. But there's always like little falls you're gonna have. But I've I've been I don't went through car windows. I don't hit park cars. Cars hit me. Ran into cars. So yeah, I did it what? all. So how'd you connect with um Boogie? Boogie. Yeah. Boogie. So you guys, because that was like. That was like a duo that was Yeah, like, it was weird, bro. Boogie, Boogie's still my dog. That's still that's still my guy forever. But um, it was more of like we had the same passion. He liked riding dirt bikes. I liked riding dirt bikes. He didn't have a job. I didn't have a job. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to ride fucking dirt bikes every day, all day. Right. And that's kind of, we grew our friendship and then we just, that's we just clicked, bro. Every day, yo, you wanna, what you want to do? What you doing, bro? We're going to ride? Yeah, yeah, we're going to grab some food. We're going to grab food. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. So it's like everything we did, we just did together and our personalities just it's no, it just it was just genuine bro it was like we didn't want each other for nothing yeah you know what we had we have shit like we, we had a pot to piss in nothing <laughs> yeah. bro i was living with my mom or living with my girl who was you know so it was nothing we had nothing to to kind of benefit off each other but just riot so that's why i think kind of made the friendship so genuine and we were just energetic people <laughs> yeah there was this one video where like you guys were in front of uh some shop and you he was on a it was a small bike and I think you bet him 20 bucks or something like that. That he couldn't scrape. And he, he, he couldn't scrape. He I, remember, I remember that day like it was yesterday. <laughs> bro, so funny. Every time he's like, because he, he's Boogie's really good at riding. Yeah. I'm like, yo, bro, you can't do this. He's like, bet you I can. I'm like, I bet 20 bucks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and every time I bet him, he falls. Every time. <laughs> every time he falls. Like, bro, you always trying to get me. I'm like, it's not me, bro. It's, you just fall, yo, you know? <laughs> that video, when I saw that shit, I don't even know how I came across that video, bro. I think it popped up in my feed. And I, was, I, was just I like, think it went pretty right. I was at like 800, yeah. 900,000 views that video. Yeah. Just that video alone. <laughs> but bro, I was, and it was real. Like that, that really happened. It, it was wasn't genuine. Like, bro, if you watch that video, that was legit our life. We would like hop on bikes, meet at one spot, and just vibe, bro. That was legit our life every day. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. No purpose but riding. I swear, there was no purpose. It was just like, yo, we're going to hop on a bike. We're going to do what, what genuinely makes us happy, and it's riding dirt bikes. Like when you get on a bike, bro, there's no other feeling. It's like jumping into a car and getting on the highways. There's yeah. no other feeling, bro. It's like, you know what I mean? So, like, that was us. Like, we couldn't afford the nice cars. That was, you know, bikes were not that expensive, but it was yeah. in our means, you know? And that was our getaway. So, no matter what, no matter what you're going through in life, right? It's like a therapeutic thing where you just get on the bike and forget about everything. 100%, bro. Like, I swear, like, people are like, yo, you got so much to live for. Like, I, I get that. But, like, when you get on a bike, there's, like, you don't think about nothing, bro. It's yeah. like, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy this moment. And hopefully I go back home because <laughs> it's dangerous, bro. It's not. It's it not. Is, it's not yeah. like a. It's not like a sweet thing. It's not like fucking planting flowers. Like you right. know, you're gonna make it home tonight. You know, right, right. Like you never know, especially riding the street, riding, riding motocross. Shout out to them guys as well on that nah, ride track because the shit's not easy and it's not safe. So have you ever tried the motocross? Yeah, I did. I did. I tried motocross. Um, I ha- I was riding a YZ two fifty at the time. 
Okay. And it was fun, bro. It was four stroke. It was really, really fun. It just got expensive. Once again, I wasn't rich. Okay. So like driving in 45 minutes to the track, an hour to the track, gas, you know, getting into the track, mm-hmm. motocross gear, making sure your bike's on, on point. And then, you know, it was, just, it was pricey. So I had to, I didn't have to stop, but it was more like, cut that, cut it down. That was, was, that was, but that was like later on when you started making money with you. Making a little bit of money. Yeah. I was making, still making a little bit of money, probably making no more than $6,000 a month at the time. Okay. Which is not a lot. And it's still like when you're trying to do a bunch of shit. Right. It's hard. Yeah. Cause yeah. you don't have no sponsors either. Nothing. Sure no time. sponsors. Yeah, no, no it's yourself. crazy, bro. Like people like these big, 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 uh, like companies don't want to sponsor kids in the street. Really? Which I think street culture is better than any culture. Right. Like when you when you have people that love genuinely love what they do, I feel like you're gonna get the best out of it. Like this is me talking to all the big people, like all the like Red Bull, whoever's watching this. Yeah. Like, bro, you're gonna get most out of the people that genuinely love this shit. Like I'm, I'm I'm not gonna lie, like people that like are born into this shit that ride motocross do crazy, you're not gonna get a lot out of them. Yeah. One, they're probably forced to do it because of their family. Two, they hate doing it because they've been doing it for so long and they're forced to do it. So you're just not gonna get it. And this that that image isn't like I don't know. It's not. People don't feed off that. Like people feed off. Like when, when we talk, when we ride, the energy we give off of, people feed off that shit, yeah. bro. Like there's a different feeling. Like when you go to motocross, I don't feed off motocross. It's like facts. It's cool. Yeah. But it, there's no, there's no like, there's no sauce there. Right. Like, you know, how New York Philly got that sauce. Yeah. That shit ain't it, champ. So like, <laughs> so like that's me talking. It's like the bigger like like sponsors. You definitely look into the to the smaller people into the you know because you can we can make anything so big. Yeah. So I feel like. Going into the hoods, finding that talent is important for the big people. I feel like it's kind of similar to boxing. A lot of the people who are the best boxers, they come from a hard background, like a background that's not, you know, it's yeah. tough. So Facts. like, you know, Mayweather, you got uh, Javante Davis, like they come from the streets. Champs, yeah. And now they're always, you know, now they're fucking at the top. Yeah. So because they, similar. They were, they're genuinely in love with the craft. Like yeah. when you find somebody genuinely in love with the craft, bro, you're going to get the most out of them at all time. Yeah. So like. That's you know, little 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 tip for the big people, guys. And sponsor the small people. <laughs> they gonna cherish you more. <laughs> Thanks. So there was some battles that you guys were doing. Yeah. Similar, similar to like street racing, you guys would meet up somewhere and you guys would do like who would do the longest wheelie. Yeah. Can you talk about that and like how what the what the rules are, stipulations? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, at you know, it was just more of like who got the who got the who got the, the the strongest wrist to go the furthest, who who has the most experience to go the furthest. And basically is it whoever picks the wheels up first and whoever drops it first, you lose. The no, person that keeps going wins. So you just start. So you guys start on the highway and just like and just go. We block off all the traffic and we go, bro. We just go for like I know Boogie. Boogie, you know, he's definitely a great example. He went for I think an hour and twenty minutes. I saw that. To like Delaware, an hour and twenty minutes on a wheelie. On a wheelie, one wheel, one wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no joke. Yeah. So when you find your balance point, Mm -hmm. what's working? Like, is it just your wrist? Yeah, you're just bro. Like, so like when you wheelie, when you wheelie a bike, you're not using your like the bike's not heavy because there's gas, right? Yeah, it's like physics, you know. So when you're hitting the gas, bro, it's literally gas and brakes and a little bit of balance. Like you don't really need balance. Like you have momentum taking you. Yeah. So there's there's no really balance unless you're at twelve o'clock like stopped. Okay. So like you really it's literally just gas and brakes and just making sure your bike doesn't bog on you or shut off. That's it. Is it who gets there first? Or who puts their their wheels? Uh, oh, their whoever wheels put, what, bro, you can be all the way in front. If you drop your, if you, if I drop my wheel and I pass you, it's over. So I have to pass you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like whoever goes the furthest. So you can go for three hours. I mean, as long as you can get there, yeah, for, in three hours. So yeah, if you can go for three hours, you can go. So I mean, me, I can't. I'm not. No, no, not happening. Oh, what? I'm so not, what's my wrist is not strong enough. What's the longest you've done? I think like 45 minutes. Yo, on yeah. a wheelie, is on crazy, a wheelie, yeah, bro. yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I had a, I had my own battle. I, I, I prepped for a battle. I literally willied almost where Boogie willied at. And I on the day of the battle, I used somebody else's bike and lost. Damn. Yeah. I lost the SOB roof. The boy roof from Philly. So what is it called? What? Yeah, you know, street racing is one thing, but like what is it you called? Just battling, you battling. Battling. Distance. You know, we're gonna battle for distance. You know, people battle for tricks too, like whoever got the best tricks. You know, on the street, you know, like, because you can jump on the bike, you know, no hands, surf. There's a bunch of different things you can do, but there's two different ways of battling. Whoever drops the bike first, distance, or tricks. When it comes to tricks, how does that work? We, you meet up, whoever has the best tricks type vibe. I, I've never battled for tricks, but I've heard of, like, the new people are battling for tricks. You think like, you could? I mean, I'm okay. You know, I've, I've, I don't know, guys. Like, me now, I'm focused on so many different things. Like, I don't really ride as yeah. much. Well, back then, I'm saying, like, back in the day, the oh, fuck yeah. I mean, back in the day, I was, I was him. I felt, <laughs> at least I felt like I was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought I was that guy. Was there anybody else on YouTube that you feel like, you know, on posted? YouTube? Nobody yeah. was fucking me on YouTube. Nobody at all. Not a single soul. <laughs> I'm just keeping it with you. You know, nobody in the bike life community, nobody was fucking me on YouTube. Because I feel like you maybe I don't know if you inspired a lot of people to do the same thing, but there's a lot of other content that mm-hmm. like stemmed from like how you were doing content yeah. on the GoPro, you know. Yeah. Uh, we we did, but like I said, like when when you do something genuinely, like you, you just love to do it, nobody's yeah. gonna fuck with you. 
And that's what I did. You know, people on YouTube making money on YouTube. I started YouTube with no money. I didn't know. I didn't even know you could make money on YouTube. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Right. So I just did it because it was cool. And I thought it was cool. So, but yeah, back in the day, no YouTuber was fucking with me on a bike. When you started making money and you were able to get out of Philly, right? You came down to Florida, mm -hmm. but you weren't here, obviously. No, nah, I was in Miami. Miami. So can you talk about how the experience was transitioning from the, uh, from Philly to Yeah, Miami? I mean, so I was, at a, I was at the point in time where I, I didn't... I was confused, right? So I was like, I, I left my girl with the baby. I left her. I went to Florida by myself. Yeah. And it was, bro, it was, honestly, it was crazy. I, I tripled with my income in like a month of me being there. It was meeting new people, collabing with different people, um, experiencing different things. Because, bro, me, from my from Philly to Miami, was a big, it's a very big difference. You know, How many I, years was it before before you... Uh, what do you mean? Like, like, how many, when, like you start, from when you started YouTube, how many years was it until you actually... Probably like about? fucking four Four years yeah, of like consistent four years hard of work. Being straight on YouTube. I maybe like maybe like three or four years, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So I went down here, I was making like probably like seven thousand dollars a month at the time, some shit like that. And I moved there, bro, and I was like making like twenty five K a month. Just on YouTube. Just I don't know if it was oh, like, on YouTube. On YouTube, okay. yeah. It was just on YouTube. That's what time was on YouTube. It was bro, it was like I don't know, it was like the palm trees felt different. Like I wanted to work, bro. Yeah. So like getting out of the atmosphere of Philly, which is like a dark cloud, bro, it just felt different. I wanted to work. I wanted to connect with new people, you know, and I want to experience life because I never experienced life, you know, from Philly to Miami, it's a whole different world. Yeah. So like, it was crazy. So you were making 25K. Yeah. A month. A just, month. and that's just of like, what, AdSense or just, just like, ad, literally just AdSense. Never had a clothing line back in the day. Never had sponsors, nothing. Just and strictly recording feel, every video. You didn't feel like nervous because what if like YouTube shut down or something? Nah, like nigga, we got to figure it out. Like there's like, I mean, at this time I was already doing it for four years. Right. Is okay. YouTube really going to shut down? Like, I, I mean, if it does, then I'll figure it out. But I'm gonna ride this wave until I can, and that's that was my like that my agenda was gonna ride this wave, get as big as I can, for as long as I can. Yeah, that's what I did. So it was like more, that was no, bro. I'm gonna live my lifestyle. I'm gonna live it. If I'm making 25 racks a month, I'm gonna get the penthouse. And that's what I did. You know, I was like, damn, I just did it, bro. And man, it, that was me recording videos every day, like still recording bike videos, still fucking going out filming some type of pranks or some shit. Yeah, just connecting with people and just networking. One thing that I can't keep up with is like how much work goes into it, how you can film a video, same day, get home, edit it, put it out the next day. How do you manage your time when you're, when you're making these videos? Well, that was my life. Okay. There was nothing else. I, you know, like I said, I broke up with my girl, so I wasn't with my girl. So there was nothing else really holding me. Your girl doesn't hold you back, but you still need to give her attention, right? Time, because at the end of the day, everybody needs that time. Yeah. You make time for what you want. So I didn't need that. And I, I, didn't, I didn't want that at the time. So I was like, bro, I'm going to pump out as much videos as I can. I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to make as much money as I can. That was my goal. My goal was to make money, film videos, and ride bikes. That was my goal. And that's what I did. Yeah. And I did it every day. I filmed it, got home, edited it, post. Filmed How long it. did it take you to edit? But I was so good at it. Four years, bro. 30 minutes, 20 minutes. 30 minutes to yeah, edit I'm not, I wasn't filming a fucking uh, a cinematic you know, movie. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. filming a lifestyle vlog every right. day. So it was more like, yeah, hey, whatever I filmed today, I'm going to just pump it out. But I, I, I made sure, like, what made me different from everybody else, I made sure I had a purpose every day. Like, I didn't just do a, a fucking daily vlog. Like, okay. I'm going to go to the beach today. Nah, nah all right, but if I'm going to go to the store, shop, do this, and buy a camera, I need a plot. I'm going to go ride my dirt bike. I'm going to get chased by the cops. That's going to be the title, thumbnail, the video, and then the rest of it's going to be my life. So, we're going to get you in with title, thumbnail, capture you in, and then I'm like, damn, I actually do like this guy. I'm like, fuck, this guy's pretty cool. Now, yeah. if he's not riding dirt bikes, I'm still going to watch him. Right. And that's how I kind of grew my fan base. Which still daily, everything, show my family, show my life, show what I do, but have that one plot, title, thumbnail. Every single day, though? Every fucking day. I so, didn't have anything else, bro. Like, what, what else do you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what else do you want to do? Because my life is fun. Think about it. Riding dirt bikes is cool as fuck. I think that's what it is. I get, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, it's not yeah. like I was in the office every day trying to fucking figure out a code. Right. I was surfing no dirt bikes, riding, sitting on the beach, living it up, getting chased by the cops. Going to the clubs every day. So this is this was my shit. So it was more of like my life was cool. So yeah. I didn't care about doing it every day. It was like, yo, I was like, yo, you want to do this? Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Come on. And I had a friend, and you know, maybe we'll just go. So can you give any anybody aside from what you said, any other tips that you can give people who are trying to get into YouTube? Because one of the most common things that people say is like, YouTube is hard, man. It's just hard. And I hear that all the time. And it is. It's not easy, but like you said, you have a purpose with every single video. Mm -hmm. So is there any other tips you can give people who are trying to get into YouTube? Honestly, I would say don't come into YouTube for the money. You're going to okay. try to come into the money. It's You're never going to get it, right? To get to get monetized isn't easy, right? You One, you got to love to do it. You know, when you yeah. started the podcast, you was like, dang, this is something I like. I like cars. I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna let it grow. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm going to, so that's one thing, just come in with a purpose and not for the money. I think that's the biggest thing. Two is stay consistent. No matter, no matter how long it takes, keep going. Like, and, and, and another thing is everything needs a purpose. 
don't go over here. Like, I'm just going to vlog my life today. I'm going to go play football and, and, and record it. We'll make sure it has a video. I'm tackling this guy going 25 <laughs> miles an hour. Make it interesting, right? Title and thumbnails are important. If, you, if, if they're not important, they're not, they're not like clicky. They're not catchy. Nobody's ever going to you know, click your video. Yeah. So I think that's kind of the biggest thing. That's really all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. If you can have a nice clickbait, a nice thumbnail, and have a good personality in the video to keep, you know, keep people drawn in, yeah. you're, it's over. You're going to be a great YouTuber. Right. But you got to get to that point. You got to get to that point. Yes. Facts. Well said. That's that's all it is. There's no science. Literally, but there's, yeah. there's no science. There's no sauce. There's nothing. Bro, I could I could blow up on YouTube four different ways if I want to right now. Mm -hmm. I I can be a family man. I can be a cook. I could be a dirt bike rider. I could. Bro, there's so many things I can do. Cause one, I know how to do it, obviously. But you have had personality, good title, good thumbnail, and stay consistent. That's all you need. Yeah. Once you can do that, bro, anybody can blow up. That's anybody, facts. anybody, bro. I had my girl. My girl. I did my girl YouTube channel. We did pranks. She did, I think she had like 60 something thousand subscribers in like three months. Each video was hitting 45,000 views. Her first check was like three grand. Shit. One month. We're not even trying, bro. There's yeah. not even trying. You know you what I'm saying? Know. It was, you just know how to. It's just knowing how to do it and just stay consistent. You know what I mean? But she stopped because she didn't like it. Yeah. If you don't like doing videos, you don't like that, that drive, that purpose, you don't have that purpose, you're never going to want to do it. So she quit. Did she tell you that she didn't like it? She didn't like it. And she's like, babe, this is not me. Okay. I'm not going to force her to do something, yeah. but she tried it. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, nah, I can't do it. And my girl cooks every day. Hey, yo, do a cooking channel. Babe, I cook for you. I don't want to cook for everybody else. Mm. I understand. That's fair. That's you know, fair. I get yeah. it. I get it. But it's like, yeah, make it a bag. You can, you know, you can make it a bag, bro. You know what I mean? But she didn't, she don't want to. So that's, that's where we're coming in was like purpose. Yeah. Her purpose isn't making a video. Her purpose is just cooking for me. Just taking care of you. That's it. Right. Can you talk about some of the bikes that you had um, coming up in, oh, I, when you came to Florida? So, I had everything, bro. You had everything. I think I, I've had every bike. They have YZ125, um, KX250, KX450, CRF450. Bro, I've bro, because I've been doing it. For, I've been riding for nine years now, ten yeah. years. So everything you could think of, I probably owned. So what's a good starter bike for somebody who wants to get into? I guess doing stunts or wheeling like you. I would say that right there, though. If you can, what, we got a big camera going over there. One fifty R, CRF one fifty R, that the red one right there, bro. That's that's probably the best overall bike you can buy. It's it's four stroke. You don't got to mix any gas. It's a good balance. You can go, you know, you can be a two hundred pounds rider. You can be a, a twenty pounds and ride it. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter the weight. The bike will move you, and it's a really really good bike overall. And it so, comes in big one and little wheels. So you can buy smaller wheels or bigger wheels. What is it called? A CRF one hundred and fifty R. CRF one hundred and fifty R. It's a Honda. Honda makes that bike. Okay, so why is that? Why is that better than any anything else? In the I don't know, bro. I feel like no matter the weight or the size, the bike's gonna move you. The bike it has power. It's a really really powerful bike. Okay. Like I said, you can buy it in two sizes. You can buy a small wheel and a big wheel. What does it go for price wise? Um, I, that's a big wheel. I pay I pay like sixty sixty five hundred bucks for it cash. Brand new. Brand new out the dealership. You can get them used though. You can get them used for like thirty five. Okay. So like thirty five, four thousand. So it's up to you. It's 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 not too pricey because if you go like the four fifties, you're spending yeah. eleven thousand brand new, and then you're yeah, spending fifty five hundred to eight thousand used. Right. Depending on the condition. What years do they run? Is it like um, throughout bro, the life that, I think that one came out in twenty fifteen. That one 2015. came out in twenty fifteen. Right now that's a twenty twenty three. So they're still making these bikes as well. And if okay. you want a two stroke bike, the KX one hundred, which is the green one right there, that's you're never gonna go wrong with the KX one hundred or KX eighty five, which is Kawasaki. Yeah. And they're great bikes. No matter what weight you are, they're gonna move you. They have great power bands and um if you want to be on a two stroke side. So those are my two favorite bikes. Now between two stroke and four stroke, is there is there any difference? I mean, yeah, the with two stroke you have to mix the bike. You have to, you know, basically put oil into the gas so you know the gears run good, everything runs smooth. Mm -hmm. Four stroke is just straight gas. You can just go, it has oil already in the motor. Um two strokes, they have power bands, they have no engine brake. So like when you're wheeling, in, the bike's just gonna go straight back. You know, it's oh, you shit. know, it's better for like doing no hands and gliding and things like that. Four stroke has the engine brake. Um, it's easier to surf. Like when you stand on a seat with no brakes, you can just ride the wheelie. Yeah, you can do that on a four stroke a lot better. So they uh, had they had they have their pros and cons. You know, it, it, like what type of person are you? Do you want to be more a little more saucy, a little more swaggy? I would go with the two stroke because it's more like you need more personality to drive a two stroke. The four stroke you can be more dry and just ride it and it'll do it easier tricks easier. Yeah, yeah. So two strokes are definitely a harder bike to to, to wheelie. Damn, and this is from the man himself. Yeah, years of experience, tons of bikes. If there's anybody to ask, it's you. For sure. I would hope. <laughs> I, I think, I, I think I, I've gained the credibility. You How know, many bikes bit. do you think you've had over the past like nine years? I don't know, bro. Right now I own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I own like eight bikes right now. Yeah. Um, right, just right now. Just right now in my big garage, plus them two. And um, throughout the years, bro, minimum realistic like probably like 35 40 35 and that's, that's being conservative that's being yeah. conservative not overdoing i'm not gonna say 150 because i don't think i've owned 150 bikes being real with you I'm like 35 40 bikes i would say Damn. is like a right a right range all brand new or you have you purchased nah, bikes used no, i wish they were all brand new now, more, more, like more used like now that i'm getting to the level i can buy my bikes new i buy yeah. all my i buy a lot of my shit new 
But back in the day, there wasn't that didn't work like that. What kind of maintenance do you do you, that goes into like you know having a bike like this? Whether it's a two stroke or four stroke, yeah, like just spark plug, oil change. If you blow the bike up, you got to rebuild the engine, which is cheap. They're not expensive. What, what does that cost? Like to rebuild a two stroke is probably like three four hundred bucks. To build a four oh, stroke, shit. maybe a thousand max because okay. you have just way more components. You have you have cams. You have uh, there's a uh, there's uh, valves. There's a bunch of things that needs to be adjusted in in a yeah. four stroke. Two strokes are so much easier. Like if you want to be affordable, go to the two stroke route. Is there any any uh, particular platform that you recommend outside of just like Honda or whatever? Hmm. I like Yamaha. Yamaha is a fucking amazing bike, especially for two strokes. Yamaha and Kawasaki for two strokes. I don't think Honda sells any more new two stroke bikes. Back in the day, they had the CRD fives, mm-hmm. but they discontinued them. Um, I would stick with the Yamaha and Kawasaki for Yamaha. two strokes. Okay, and um, they have amazing four stroke bikes as well. Are they more money, Yamaha or? No, nah, they're all around the same range. I think all the cheapest the bike you can buy is like a Suzuki. They have okay. RM still, RM eighty five, but nobody really buy Suzuki like that. Uh, yeah, usually for, I mean, unless it's like a, a motorcycle. Yeah, okay. Suzuki, that's it. But Yamaha, Kawasaki, and Honda are ahead of this class. They are they stay ahead. Does the same thing go for, well, actually, I had a Suzuki. Uh, I had a quad. Uh, I think it was the LTZ 450. Yeah, yeah. LTR 450. LTR 450, my bad. Yeah, yeah LTR. Um, that was a Suzuki. That wasn't bad. No, they're great bikes. Dorky. The LTZ 400 is probably the best bike, though. The, right. the little brother. It comes with reverse. The best four wheeler, hands down, for the money. Wait, it comes with reverse? Yeah, the that's 400. That's the one I had then. Yeah, that Whatever you had one I had, yeah, I had the reverse on yeah, it. Yeah, you had a 400. Yeah, that's the best bike, hands down. That shit was kind of pricey. I think it was like 70, 7,500 bucks. New? No? Nah, I think it was used. Used? They smoked the ass. Because I get them right now for like 4,500. Maybe it was new. Dude, it, I was like 17, bro. Yeah, probably. I, it probably was new. Got probably clapped. New. I financed that shit. <laughs> oh, was, you financed it? Yeah. It was new. Yeah, it was new. Yeah, it, it was, was it was uh, a sh- shitty deal. Honestly, bro, any bike you buy nowadays, you're going to be fine. It's like you have Yamaha, the, the um, YFZ, uh, well, YFZ 450, I believe that's what it is. Um, you have the Raptor 600 from Yamaha. You have the LTZ 400 from Suzuki. Um, Kawasaki is not making any more sports quads, so they don't have any right now. What about the um, the Banshees? Like they hate, don't make those anymore, I right? I fucking hate Banshees, yeah. I fucking hate them. Really? Banshees. They always break down. Now, there's going to be a bunch of Banshee lovers in the comments, but each every Banshee I've ever seen, if it's not all bone stock and like had one owner, they're pieces of shit. All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. You can't rebuild them to make you them? You can, but they fucking suck. Bro, they all are trash. So Sorry. what's the hype? Because back then, bro, I, that, that Banshee That's was smoking. Like, even nowadays, people are like, oh, Banshees are still the best bikes in the world. Bro, they are trash, bro. They are trash. They, they always blow up. You always got spark plug issues. There are ones running on one cylinder, not the other one. Bro, it's just, it's a headache, bro. It's a headache. Two carburetors, two, it's too much. Yeah. I'm cool. I would, like, I, I would buy a Banshee to hang it in my garage. I'll hang it right here and never use it. Because <laughs> yeah. it, it is an iconic bike. It is. Like, you know, yeah. you give, give props when it's due. Growing it's up, that cool. was like, that was the shit to have, though. If you had a Banshee, you was that guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, not no more. You, you that Banshee, you're an idiot because it might break down on you. And trails, riding too much it might be more of an og thing then it is an og thing then, like you see the, the rough videos yeah, yeah music bro, videos i mean first back in the day they were the coolest shit bro the fastest fuck two stroke like yeah really good nice bike but now it's just like nah mm-mm. like i guess because of the age obviously you have to find one and yeah then, i mean if they come out with a new one and tune it maybe that it's gonna be the shit obviously because yeah. they're still cool bikes i just right. me personally i wouldn't want to own one and ride one and just deal with the headache facts not it so when you when you're doing these um wheelies on uh well you can't do it on quads right but uh when you do the wheelies this this tuning thing that you guys tuning, do, yeah. right? You can do it on quads too. You can do it on quads too. You can do it on yeah, quads. Yeah, you got you got to be that guy though. I don't even understand how it works. So tuning, I think I believe it started in Baltimore. Okay. Quote me if I'm wrong. Put me in the comments. But I believe it was like, um, I know the guy Willie Wayne, uh, Chino, um, a bunch of guys from the you know that actually like that came from the core. Mm-hmm. That was like a Baltimore thing, and um, it came to Philly, and everybody was like, "Yo, there's tuning shit, bro. We gotta figure it out." Da, da, da. And like just moving your wrist like this. I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And you just make the bike just chop like, bah, 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 bah. right? And like you gotta you gotta use your brakes with it at the same time, so you gotta use the brakes so the bike doesn't go back because obviously the more gas you give more it, gas the more you, yeah. it goes back. So you have to have a balance between the brake and the gas, and just having that 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 balance point just to keep going with it. So it, chopping is pretty fucking cool. I, to me personally, I still do it to this day. I think it's like the swaggiest thing on the bike. Well, yeah, because obviously if the bike is up, you have to you, you're at your balance point or whatever it is, and then you have to fucking keep. You have to keep hitting the gas at the same time, hitting your brake and keeping the bike leveled. And but it looks like you're not even like I think what's his name, uh, Boogie. Boogie's he does really good at chopping. Yeah, that was one of the things that I noticed about him. Even in his videos on Instagram, like they just go. Da, 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 da. Oh shit! Oh, he's really he's really he's really good at it. Yeah, he's like da, 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 da. it's cool. You blow your bikes a lot doing it because like because really? you're 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 pissing smacking the head back and forth and you're keeping on the rev limiter. You blow your bikes doing it. It's gonna happen. But um, it's cool as fuck. It's worth it. I Do you guess. think that he has like one of the best uh, tunes? Tunes? Yeah, hands down. Yeah, I mean, I, we we're getting older, so we don't ride as much as we. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna talk for me because Boogie still rides every fucking day. Yeah, <laughs> Boogie, but like, I'm going to bike. I'm out. <laughs> Boogie still be riding, but um, he definitely, at least from to my to my knowledge, he had one of the best tunes, and that probably still does, hands down.
Yeah. Fuck no, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Randy was here right now, bro. Matter of fact, can we call him? Can we call him? Can we call him? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him. I'm like, yo, Randy, you think? I'm, yo, I'm, I'm, shout out to Randy though. That's my dog. You know, yeah. he, he moved to Miami. He moved to Miami with me. And yeah, he was the one recording all right. my videos for me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was yeah, gonna, yeah. That was my next thing to get into Randy because uh, you obviously call him right now. Up. He's at work, but yo, Rand. Yep. Yo, I'm on a podcast, the Street Alpha podcast. Yo, you better than Boogie, right? hundred percent. Yeah, he said it, bro. He said it. You heard it from the man himself. He said he's better than Boogie and Tuning, right? Bro, what? I got the fastest tune in bike life. Oh, shit. He said he got the fastest tune in bike life. What? <laughs> nah, bro. But Randy's a fucking troll. So how'd you guys, how'd you guys connect? Because I was like... Damn, uh, me and Randy? So I was I was shopping for a car that I couldn't afford at that Audi okay. dealership. It's like, this is real shit. This How many like, videos have you done where you're like, yo, I'm about to go buy a bike. I'm about to go buy a car. A hundred, bro. Because yeah. everybody likes when you fucking buy shit and you can't afford it. You yeah. know what I like, You know, so like back in the day, I'm going to go buy everything, you yeah. know, window shop my ass off. But I was at the Audi dealership looking at a C63 Mercedes. Okay. And no damn well I couldn't afford the Pricey. motherfucker. It was like 70000 at the time. Yeah. And um, Randy, his mom, his mom, um, Randy, his mom, and his stepdad were walking out of the dealership. He had an Audi RS7 at the time. Really nice car. It was his stepdad. RS7. RS7, yes. Damn. He was walking out of the dealership, and he was like, yo, I'm a big fan. Get it, yada. I got a nice car. I was like, oh, what car do you have? I was like, RS7. Like, oh, fuck. Let's film one day. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, you got a nice car. I had an STI at the time. I had a WX STI. Okay. Yeah. yeah so he I was like, that, yeah. oh, let's, you know, we'll film some shit. You know, he likes my videos. Fucking why not? You know? And that's how we connected. And then from there, he just he filmed for you. Was he like, was he living with you? I nah. always wonder how like people who film for you, like how how you, how that works yeah. when you're. So basically, with Randy, like I said, I, I left my, my wife at the time. I wasn't with my girl. I was like, yo, I'm moving to Miami. I was like, yo, Randy, you want to move with me? He's like, we 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 knew each other for like seven months, eight months at the yeah. time. He's like, yo, fuck it. COVID just happened. Nobody had a job. He was getting unemployment. I was like, yo, fuck it, let's go, bro. Well, what can I lose, bro? Yeah. And we went out there and just killed it. So you weren't you weren't with your girl? Mm -mm. Oh shit! Did, did, did the viewers know that? Yes and no. Me and my girl kept our relationship really private. We never like time. went around. Even still, bro, like we don't even post. Like we we have our own thing. Like yeah, we just you know I feel like I have an internet life and I have a real life. Right. So like internet life, I just keep business. Did that affect your 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 consistency on YouTube, or you just kept pumping? Nah, fuck on content no. no I mean, what? or think about it, it was what I was with like 19, 20, 19, 20 at the time yeah, when I moved to Miami. Crazy, 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 which is yeah. crazy. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I was, bro. I was with my girl for like four or five years at the time. I was finally single. I was outside, bro. But obviously, what it, it didn't that wasn't what I wanted because I, obviously I'm with my family now. Yeah, so yeah. no, nah, of course it was. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> I'd rather have my family, 100. percent Like that, that partying lifestyle shit is cool and all until it's like nobody's there. You know what I'm saying? Like when the when the money's there, everybody's there. When the money's not there, nobody's there. So it's like Facts. you know, it was like when then when you got a when you got a girl or a person that says, "Yo, no matter what happens, I'm with you." That's where you want to. That's where you want to be. And as a kid, nineteen years old, that's still a kid to me. You don't give a fuck about that. You don't cherish that. Obviously, yeah. right? My girls are older than me, so she, she cherished that. She's like, "Yo, like that's crazy." And I'm just like, "I don't give a fuck." Yeah. At the time, right? Now that I'm a little bit older, I'm about to be twenty five years old. I'm like, "Yeah, that's, that's what I need." No, of course. Like, I'm gonna make millions of dollars and live the life. I'm gonna mm -hmm. give it to somebody that deserves it. Right. I'm not gonna be out here fucking doing dumb shit. That's facts. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Well said. Can't, bro. They're gonna fuck you over. You know, <laughs> child support is expensive. <laughs> That's a so, fact. Uh, when you and Randy were making content together, was there any other influences that you came across that were into the bike scene? Because you were doing a lot of content out here. You were doing <laughs> pranks. You were doing um, racing videos with the cars that you were buying. Yeah, you know so. what's funny? I, I didn't really collab with a lot of people. Okay. It was more of like, I didn't want to be with anybody. Like, I didn't want to like really, like, I didn't want nobody to feel like I was using them. Right. Because, you know, I, don't, I guess that was a thing coming from Philly. You want to just stand on your own. You want to be your own, be your own person. Now, I'll be like, bro, you can, you can say I'm using you. I don't give a fuck. And I got my own thing. And, yeah. you know, if we can help each other, we help each other. Back in the day when I was going crazy on YouTube, I didn't want that. Yeah. I was like, nobody's going to ever take this from me. Like, this is me. Being a stubborn Philly kid, you know? <laughs> nobody's ever going to take this from me. So, I didn't really collab with people at all. At all. Nah, I mean, like, maybe two or three videos. Like, Austin Dunham, he's like a workout guy. He had a Corvette. Yep. He's yeah. a really cool guy. He's really humble. He had a Corvette CA. We did a couple of race videos. Um. Then we did a couple of pranks with different couple couple different people. Mm -hmm. Like the Fresh and Fit podcast, we we fuck with them as well. You were on the Fresh and Fit? Yes, we were on the Fresh and Fit podcast. They're pretty cool people. Who's we? Um, it was me. I went with Boogie. It was me, Boogie. Oh shit. Um, but I, I went on the podcast by myself, but I was there with a couple people. Oh, what? was that recently? Because they haven't been out that long, right? Like nah, maybe three, like four a, years. Like probably like two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. And was, was it just you guys, or was it a bunch of like the, the whole OnlyFans girls thing? I did that at the end too. Yeah, I did that then too. How, how was the experience there? It was cool. I think it was it was it was fun. Um. They definitely go a little overboard sometimes. Yeah, I feel like for me, for the women at least, no, 100%, I like to treat yeah. everybody accordingly. Right. But I guess that's their that's their image. That's their yeah. That's, that's their, their thing. Image. You know, we gotta treat these people this way so we can you know because you have right. people that are like 
weird when it comes to women. Yeah. And that's just not me. So yeah, I, I kind of stay away from that extra shit. So how did you connect with uh with the man the myth legends over here? Rob? Yeah. Robbie Bear. <laughs> so I wanted to some like I said, I, I do things weird, right? I wanted to like, make music at one time. Yeah. And Rob was a engineer at the time, songwriter, producer, he does all the extra shit. And then when I, I ran I ran into him at an underground fight. The shit got raided, the cops were there. He looked at my shoes. I had um cactus plant flea market dunks. The cactus D- plant dunks? dunks. The one with the diamonds all over them. Yeah, yeah. Crystals. Oh, I I was there when you bought those. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. So at the time they were worth like 10 racks right shit like that and he was like those are some cool shoes i'm like thanks he was like trying to make fun of them or something like yeah they, they, they're worth 10 grand he's like oh shit and I'm like, oh fuck all right you know like that's yeah. cool you know and then we were just talking shit you know i was i was standing on the table and rob was like right under me because i was short I'm like i can't see all these people so they put me on the table and rob was like who the fuck is this guy you know <laughs> and i'm over here like yeah you want to bet on this shit and he never paid me <laughs> <laughs> he never paid me my money and then um we were just hanging around the right people at the right time, and then uh, we started making music. I sucked at it. Never really got anywhere with it. I quit music, and then uh, we just started businesses together. Well, so <laughs> so all those all the songs that you were doing, he produced? Yeah. We did everything together. He wrote, r- fucking helped me sing everything, everything. <laughs> yeah. Literally. So all the, so there was a music video you guys uh, you guys did. Uh, Zoom. We did Zoom. We did Zoom the, Out the Mud. We did a couple. You know, it's funny. You asked me. You actually, when I first met you, you asked me to shoot a music video for you. Yeah, but we were in, I, I was in Miami. You I know, but I don't know what video was, what video it was. Was it Zoom maybe? It was, nah, it definitely wasn't Zoom. It was probably Out the Mud. Out the Mud has like so. 1.3 million views. But crazy. you had a video out already with, um, which Kick we didn't even Yes. Kick it, yeah, yeah, yeah. which actually, that did pretty well. It did it fucking amazing. Um, Ride, called Ride. Ride, I was a, yeah. That was like my, my peak of my YouTube career. I was doing like 60, 70,000 views a video. And uh, we released a video of us riding just yeah riding their bikes are you guys still cool you guys still connected um i think we are everybody grew apart okay everybody you know everybody went their own way um no harm no foul to any one of them Mm -hmm. but it's just we all grow you know and when i grow i grow fast like i said when i do something i really want to do it yeah and if you're not on on board with me i just got to keep going so did that inspire you to keep doing music that 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 big video no it was more of like when i ran into him he was like yo let's fucking let's do something i was like yeah i want to kind of make music let's why not you know i was kind of at the like end of my youtube i was like i want to try something different you know and then I was like, let's try it. We, I, I started to get pretty good. Like, we didn't release good, the music we had. Yeah. And Rob was like, you quit once we fucking got you where we needed you to be, bro. And I was like, I'm sorry, Rob. It's just not me. I'm not a rapper. I'm not a singer. Well, what, what took you to realize that, though? What, like, because obviously he's pushing you. Obviously, he's yeah, yeah. Car, so. um, I didn't have to drive for it. Okay. So it was more of like, it was cool in the beginning. Like, fuck, I'm getting good at it. It's something I wanted to do. And then when I actually got okay, I was like, yeah, this ain't it, champ. No. Nah, and we were doing pretty good. Like our music videos were hitting millions of views. Like we were That's like our saying, music yeah. video is seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand million views. Like even these artists can't do. And he probably was like, yo, just keep going. I'm like, nah, this ain't it. Like and everything happens for a reason because now we trade Forex and it's the best thing I've ever done in my life, you know? Yeah. So like I just like I said, if you can't come into YouTube having that drive, don't do it. I went into music not having a drive and I quit. You're gonna quit if you don't have the drive. There was no purpose for me. So I want to do YouTube to make money. I want I wanted to do music to make money, sign a record deal, mm-hmm. a couple million, done. That never happened. Because there was no drive, there was no passion yeah. behind it, so that's what happens. Obviously, your content has changed. People are probably, um, you know, how it goes when you when you make mm-hmm. a life change. Obviously, you you focus on yourself and your family. You want to yes. have more time to yourself. You don't want to spend countless hours and days putting time into your videos, dropping videos every day when you have a kid as well. So, how did you deal with the backlash of people saying, "Oh, rap changed. He's different now. He's not making." They still they still say to. it to this day. I mean. The biggest thing for me is I don't give a fuck what nobody has to say. Okay. That's, I, bro, you can call me whatever you want, say you whatever you want. If you haven't met me in person and haven't had a conversation with me, I genuinely don't care. Because yeah. that's 90% of the people on YouTube, 99% of the people on YouTube, the comments. Um, I just let it go. You know, keep doing me. You know, keep going. Because at the end of the day, they don't pay my bills. You know, that's just, it is what it is. I mean, I, if the viewers pay my bills from watching videos, but yeah. other than that, then it's not, there's nothing to it. Do you feel like any of your content at all throughout your career was driven by the fans and what they wanted? At a certain point, yeah. Because I had to. It was like, yo, if you're going to keep creating content every day, you need to feed the viewers what they want. Yeah. And if you don't feed the viewers what they want, they're not going to watch. Right. And at the end of the time, I, I needed YouTube. You know, I needed my money. Yeah. But towards the end, I just didn't give a fuck. It was more like, all right, I started different things, started different careers. I had my merch. I was like, bro, we were doing crazy. We was doing six figures a month in merchandise sales. So it was like, nobody cared. I didn't give a shit at the end. Wow. So what was the most you've made throughout your YouTube career? On just on YouTube itself? Uh I think the entire my Like for like you know how yeah, yeah. No, just just YouTube. Days. I made like one point five mil on YouTube throughout my career. Well, okay. Seven, on. Years, <laughs> seven years. Seven years. Seven years. So all right, but before before like not total, like okay. just in one month. What was your peak month throughout your 70 something thousand. 
How much? 70 something, like 70 something. And that's just off AdSense? AdSense, yeah. 70K. Yeah. And that was when you were in Miami? Yes. Or before that? Miami. Miami was my peak. Miami was my peak. When I lived in Miami for a year and a half, that was my peak time. I had a time where I hit each one of my videos hitting 100,000 views every video, every day. That was my biggest month. Yeah. That was was a holy shit, bro. You can fucking do this, bro. So coming up the way you came up, though, when you see that kind of money coming in, right? Do you feel like you wanted to get more flashy? Do you want to change up your lifestyle always, a little bit? Always, always. I mean, especially coming from where I come from, I was like, yo, I finally, you know, that's when I bought my C7 Corvette. I had a Z06 yeah. at the time. I bought that, I bought an R8, yep. you know. Um, I just wanted what I wanted. And it, as, long, as long as I was being able to sustain the money, I was, yeah. you know, was going to do it regardless. I had to go for whatever the fuck I want. If yeah. I can do it, I'm going to get it. Not nah, facts. Yeah. Even now, still to this day, like if I can buy it, I'm buying it. Right. You're not going to die with all this money. Like, you never know when you're going to go. Obviously, make sure you take care of your family. You know, make sure you have a trust. Make sure you have, you know, uh, life insurance, things like that. To make sure your family's always going to be good, no matter what. Savings, things like that. Businesses. But I'm buying that shit. Like, I have five cars and two of us drive them. You know what I mean? I have eight (laughs) dirt bikes. I drive them. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, why fucking? Because I can. Yeah. (laughs) Why not, bro? (laughs) So at that time, I definitely got more flash. I bought a watch. I bought a car. I bought this. But. It comes with the game. Yeah. Comes, you have to, especially being on social media, you have to raise your image. Right. At all times. No, 100%. And you, have, you said you had the R8, which I f- completely forgot about, mm-hmm. uh, that Sheepy had built. Mm-hmm. So you got rid of that. How was your experience with the, with the car? Did you like the setup? And I fucking loved it, bro. I, I loved, I loved the, the twin turbo. It was fucking fast. One of the fastest cars I've ever driven was 900 wheel. It was fucking fast as shit. It was real yeah. drive. Um, it was cool, bro. It was all great. I had to sell that R8 to get my house, though. With this house? This house, yeah. This house that we're at now. So. I owned this house for almost two years now. I had to sell that because my debt to income ratio wasn't the craziest. Right. You know, I, had, I was making good money, but wasn't making the craziest money. Mm-hmm. So I had to sell that to get this. So I made a dope, an adult decision. With the R8, was there any other issues you had with it? Because that's my next car, bro. I'm telling you, I, I know. That's R8, be, go R8, R8. Go R8 or go Huracan. 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 With the twin turbo setup, though, like, was, is there any issues when you, when you go twin turbo with that? I mean, the I just R8? wouldn't go sheepy. Oh. I can't talk about it. I just wouldn't go sheepy. Oh. Go anywhere else. UGR. She was a great people, all that. I just can't talk about them. Oh, yeah. okay. I just, I, me personally, I just wouldn't go sheep. Yeah. So with, with twin turbos at that level, like on those cars, I, I don't, it's just like, they're in the back of the car, it's heat. I, like, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Like, I don't know if you yeah, have no, any I'm, I, I've never had, I mean, I bought the car and I didn't even break it in. I went, I went straight to the canyons and fucking heat soaked it. It was like 110 degrees, but I was yeah. beating the shit out the car in the, in the canyons and it was so obviously, you're gonna eat so okay, you know okay. you, you have no choice. Yeah, I mean, there's was, there was no other option. It was gonna happen, but other than that, I have no issue with the car. No, I have no issue with the car. All right, so twin turbo R8 coming soon then. Yeah, go UGR <laughs> anywhere else. UGR. Yeah, yeah. A little okay. more. It's a, I think it's a little more money. Like a little more. I'm talking about like five k. Right. Yeah, I spent fifty some thousand dollars on that build. Damn. Just on the build. Yeah, without 50K. the car. Yeah, fifty k. Stock and it was stock transmission, stock, stock motor. Yeah, everything was stock. I had nine hundred wheel. Wow. Fun. Very, very, very fun car. But it wasn't all wheel drive, right? No, rear wheel. Rear wheel. I drive. couldn't afford the all wheel the all wheel drive one. How much did you pay for the car? I paid one thirty five for it. One thirty five. So it would have been like what? One seventy, one eighty. One seventy. I was in the car like one seventy something. Yeah, one eighty, roughly. Shit. And I sold the car for like one fifty. So I lost money on the car. Wow. So let's get into like the more, more recent. Damn, she got some HF fives on there. Yes. Sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> I built. I built my wife a Bronco. Wife, you just pulled up. <laughs> I built my wife a Bronco. Put it on the. Put it on the screen right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I built that. I was. She got me distracted. I'm like, those. Are, I had those wheels on my Supra. Yeah, HF5s. Bronco. Bronco Raptor. We built that motherfucker. Yeah, we, we're going to get into that in a second. So you you uh now you obviously started from, you know, bikes coming up from Philly. Now you're Forex paid. Yes. So what the hell made you want to get into trading? Yeah, so I met this guy. So I'm going to tell you the whole story. I met this guy. He was interested in dirt bikes. I was a dirt biker. Okay. I was the biggest at the time. Still, literally, still one of the biggest at the time. Yeah. And I drove down to Miami and, you know, we're riding. We're having fun. The guy that I met before... The guy that I met, he had an SVJ, he had a 600 LT, mm-hmm. he had a Rolls Royce Cully, he had a bunch of shit. I'm like, what the fuck do you do? And he's like, I trade. I'm like, holy shit, that's cool. Still didn't care about it. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. cool. You know what I'm saying? And we're at the strip club one night, and this guy's blowing like 20,000, 30,000 at the strip club. I'm like, yo, like, and they're like, yo, we're gonna put you on. I'm like, put me on what? Nigga, I don't even know what y'all do. Like, what do you mean, put me on? Like, you gonna give me some money? You know yeah. what I mean? And they were like, no, we're gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you how to do this. I'm like, all right, bet, 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 yeah. So I took the course. Um, and just a- after I took the course, I just self-taught myself everything I fucking knew. I learned the course. I learned the basics. After I took the course, I was still losing. I still sucked at, at it out the ass. And then I, I brought Robin. I'm like, Rob, let's learn this shit together. And we were learning. We was losing, 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 losing. And then one, and I just kept doing my research. Every day we were just losing, just losing, bro. I'm losing, losing all of our money every day, just learning. And then, you know, I kept, like I said, doing my research. And I found this one thing. I was like, holy shit, it just changed my perspective on yeah. trading. I just I needed this one little skill set mm-hmm. to add to it. And then from that day on, it was 
it was been up. It's been a, it was been a battle going up, but it was yeah. been up. You know what I mean? I turned twenty thousand to sixty thousand, and I think like a month. How much money did you put up initially, though? Twenty thousand like, of my, your that, own personal. That was money. my my. So in the beginning, I was buying funded accounts. Funded accounts are like accounts that if you pass it, they fund you like a hundred thousand mm. dollars, different things like that. So we were spending like eight hundred to a thousand dollars every time, blowing them every day. I'm talking about we're blowing them at least two three times a day, right, Rob? Yeah. Two three times a day, we're blowing these funded accounts, and we're buying them back to back to back to back. And I'm just like, fuck, you like, you know, we got to figure this shit out. And then when I kind of tweaked it, and when I learned that one skill set, yeah. I put twenty thousand of my own money, ran it up to sixty thousand in a month, and I was like, holy shit, I can do this. What? And then I blew sixty thousand in one day. One day, <laughs> training. Bro, one day, what? Training. one night, I blew sixty grand. And um, I never stopped, bro. I just kept going and then deposit another twenty, turn yeah. twenty into a quarter million in a couple months, and now I'm here. So how many how many months did it take for you to you know trial and error, fucking up, learning the trading, all that stuff to to get to? I've been trading for two years. Two years. I've been okay. trading for two years. I would say a year and a half or a year and like two months. I really became profitable. Okay. And that is me making money. Me. You know, depositing, I mean, withdrawing, right. you know, paying shit with with Forex money. And, yeah. and I came up with Forex paid. You know, nobody does that shit. Nobody does like, I was the first asshole to put Forex paid in the industry. <laughs> yeah. I was one of the first guys in the industry, even I've only been doing it for two years, to go live trading. Show people that I could actually trade live. Because yeah. me coming into the game, me being a full-time YouTuber, making all my money from YouTube, everyone's like, oh, he's just a YouTuber trying to get into another uh, a trading scheme. or yeah. trade, the Forex has a bad fucking name. Yeah, I was like gonna say that. IML was people, the people that the, the, the marketing teams, they fucked up the Forex industry, at least the Forex name. And, you know, me coming into the Forex game, they're like, oh, he's just another one of them, the marketers mm -hmm. and this shit like that. So I just had to really prove myself. And nobody was trading live at the time. And I told Rob, I was like, oh, Rob, I'm gonna fucking try trade live every day. And I still, I still low key sucked. Like, I wasn't winning every day, but I'm gonna do it every day, show them that I can do it. And, bro, every day, they, the squad, bro, people watching me got me better. Really? People criticizing me got me better. And, like, and I was like, yo, fuck it. I started charging people to get into my Discord to, to trade live with us. Now we have people making three, four thousand dollars a day with us. Five thousand people. I'm not gonna lie, I was in there. I saw some people making some money too. So yeah, that's facts. Bro, I, there's yeah. no lie, bro. I I, tra I trade live every day. I post my profits. I post my withdrawals. I post my shit. I fucking I buy my cars. Like I have the title to that car. Like, like yeah. you know, what I mean? it's like I I I do this shit. You know what I'm saying? So like. We just had to prove to the industry that we weren't fucking around, and that's what yeah. I did in the last were, two years. Were you nervous when you got into it because of what the name, the the, the name behind Forex and people? No, standing? because the person that I met was so good at it. Yeah. So he already sold me on the on the dream. Okay. Now I just had to get good at it and figure out myself. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't nervous because I knew somebody that that fucking did it. Like I was close with the guy who did it. Yeah. I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. I'm not stupid. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out. That's what I did. Shit. So there was no, there was no, I, I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared of losing money. I wasn't scared of anything. I was scared of not winning. That was my scary because I, I quit YouTube to do this. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I, I quit YouTube and, and I told Rob, I was like, Are you sure you want to do this? I'm not fucking quitting, bro. Because I was always so busy. If I was going to record every day, how am I going to trade every day? Right. You know, especially learning. Now I can record every day and trade every day because all I do is trade for an hour and a half, two hours max. I already have the skill set. I don't need to, you know, I, every day we learn and we practice, we, we get better, we sharpen our, sharpen our knife. But other yeah. than that, I'm, I'm good. I go on the market and know I'm going to win. You know what I'm saying? I build my story before I get on the market. I'm good. You know what I mean? But in the beginning, I couldn't do that because I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the experience to, to do what I'm doing now. So I had yeah. to quit. I had to quit something. I remember I had passion. I wanted to do this shit. Right. So. No, were you spending the same amount of time in the beginning? Because you said you're only on for an hour now. But no, I was, I was, we were doing this shit. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We would meet up, Rob and I, me, Rob, Nick, and Randy, which are literally like my only friends I have. Yeah. We would link up three times a day to trade and lose all three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, and Jordan, we cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner for us every day. <laughs> and we would lose. I'm telling you, we, we fucking sucked. But now it's, we run in the, we, I feel like we're, we're becoming that level. We're almost running the industry. Like we have the biggest signal room. There's nobody with a signal room bigger than us right now. Yeah. Like we have 600 active members paying us actively winning actively you know who else is giving you like we're in our in, in our, our discord we're like yo you know what join for 50 dollars. Mm -hmm. join for 50 dollars. if you like it you stay you pay 250 because yeah. our, our normal price is 250 but if you don't like it cancel but our goal is to turn that 50 dollars into a thousand the first day i mean yeah. the first week i'm the first month sorry that's because we're gonna do it it's easy yeah you know it's not hard especially if you're following our trades right and we do it is this something that you have to be like, you know, like you have to hold somebody's hand through the process or you kind of have to like, cause let's say if yes. somebody signed up. Yes like, and no. Yes and no. Okay. Like yes and no. So it's like we have traders that have a little experience that catch on a little bit faster, but then we have people that have no knowledge that come in. They're like, yo, what am I doing? Yeah. So we kind of say, hey, look, buy here, sell here. 
um, do this, get out of this. So we, we, I kind of try to baby every trade for all of our, for all of my people. I try to walk them in, walk them out yeah. as much as possible. But then we have people that we have to cater. Like we do in-person events where we sit with people and we teach them how to trade for five days, teach them everything. So we, you know, everybody needs different things. Yeah. Some people can learn off a course. Some people can't. We just uh, cater to different people. That's the truth. So when, when it comes to people saying that, you know, this could be a scam, how do you deal with those people? Obviously you don't give a shit. Cause obviously, yeah, you I mean, at the end of the day, you know, there's some people that want to change and there's some people that don't give a fuck and they just want to criticize you and those are the people that just don't give a fuck and want to criticize yeah. you you're not going to change that person's mind no matter what car you drive no matter how good you are no matter what withdrawals you show them no matter how many profits you show them no matter if you take their money and flip it for them if they have that already in their mind that you're a scam this is all a scam let it be a scam yeah. I mean for, for, I, I don't need to change my mind because I can shut all this shit down today shut the group down and I can just trade by myself and yeah. still afford my lifestyle and still make some money and still make my money you know what I'm saying you know 100k weeks 100k months just trading, not leaving my desk. Dude, there was one video I think I, you posted on Instagram. You was you fucking made like eighty thousand or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. You was in the car and you was swiping up. I was like, what the fuck is going I think on? Was, I, I think it was like, I think it was like twenty five thousand, but it was like eighty thousand like in a week. In, but how in a week? Yeah, it was like a week. Yeah. No, it was that one day. It was that one. I don't know what it was, bro. It was oh. something. Yeah, I remember. I almost crashed driving. It's closing my yeah. trades. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I was like, what the what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where's that shit coming from? Yeah, it'd be like that. <laughs> so, so what? So, as opposed to like making the money you were making back then, what do you think? Like, what are you making now? I'm doing. Compared to I'm YouTube, doing good. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm doing really yeah, yeah. good. No, but compared to YouTube, oh, way over. Like I'm doing. Like I said, bro. You it's, said you paid 1.5 over the over the, like the the I, career. Yeah, over my already. I probably made already that in the last two years. Shit, that's crazy. Yeah, easy, J bro. Just yeah, I definitely. You can just see the lifestyle change. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. the lifestyle change. Like, I didn't have a Lambo. I didn't have a Corvette. I didn't have five cars. You know, it's hard to afford that. Even though when you make $100,000 a month or $70,000 a month, it's, it's cool. But you got to sustain it. You got to make sure you can always yeah. get to that level. And you have how many acres is this property? 5.5. 5.5. 5. Yeah. 5.5 5 acres. We got a house, two-car garage, and then a 60 by 40 hangar. <laughs> now we got a basketball court getting built now. <laughs> <laughs> plus the other house you live in yeah plus the other house i live in yes and then how many how much money in cars um hmm. <laughs> um i paid seventy five thousand for that that's cash i bought that cash i bought this one this one's a lease here this one was two hundred and like thirty thousand at least that one obviously full write-off because when you lease your cars no matter what car it is it's under business full write-off so make sure you do that um jordan's bronco i spent one hundred forty thousand on that um which is dope which is crazy <laughs> yeah, i spent one hundred forty thousand on that's bronco raptor i spent one hundred and twenty thousand on my pickup truck uh ford f350 and then i spent seventy five thousand dollars on the build which is crazy wait till you see that shit and then my hellcat red eye jailbreak i spent one hundred and thirty five thousand on that i think i was there when you bought that no not the red eye. i was it was the you were there with my yellow one yeah the yellow, yellow one, yeah. one yeah yeah i bought that too yeah and you you don't have that anymore right no no i sold it you got yeah. rid of that damn and so you I, got and i had a urus i sold my urus right before I don't think I've seen that, but I don't remember I, that. Yeah. I, bought, I bought my Urus and my Hellcat the same day. And then um, I sold my Urus because I had to do some financial shit. So Damn, I had bro. a lot of money into that car. And once I get my Aventador, I'm going to get the Aventador and hopefully for my birthday. If everything goes right with the property and um, finish building, I'll get an Aventador for my birthday. Aventador? Yeah, SV. SV. Yeah, SV. Like a, like a lease? Probably going to lease it. I'm probably going to lease it. It just makes the most sense. Like uh, To buy a cash is very fucking stupid for me, at least for me yeah. right now. I mean, there's people that can afford to buy a cash. I don't even want to afford to pay five hundred thousand for a car cash. I don't think I think it's a little stupid. Nah, yeah. I can I know this rest in real estate and put more into my account. You know, I'm I'm very comfortable with paying, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month in car notes because I can afford it. It doesn't really bother me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's all a write off. Right. So it's like you see spend all the money cash or just write off at the end of the year. And I think I just rather write off at the end of the year and just keep my money in my account and then have different investments. Cause I have a, people hit me up all the time. My boy Scott hits me up, yo, I got an investment in Columbia, you know, hundred K cash each person. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, if, if, if you're going to do, if you're going to buy cars cash, I mean, be personally, it's hard. Yeah. I can't keep spending all this money cash on, on everything. Right. It's just what it makes sense. So right. some things I buy cash, like the Corvette, and then some things I buy, I lease it. I lease it, right. Yeah. It makes the most sense. Do you ever have days where, you know, you sit there and you think about like where you were coming from and how you, you know, where, like how you had nothing into like having all this shit, like Honestly, you're buying bro, stuff? No. No? No. It, 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 I feel like, I, I don't know why. I feel like I don't look back enough. I, and maybe that might be a flaw. Cause like I'm always looking forward. Like I, I don't appreciate this shit. I keep going. Like I bought this. I bought the Huracan. Yeah, I want an Aventador. Yeah. Yeah, we have an Aventador. I want a. I want an SF90. I want. So it's like I. I don't know if that's like a flaw for me. Like I, I don't look back and cherish anything. Yeah. I just keep going forward because there's no breaks. There's no limits to anything in in in, in this world. So it's like I don't really look back. I'm like damn, I was sitting in the hood. Like 
you know, man, now I'm looking back like, holy fuck, that's a big difference. But in like my day to day life or just like one day, I'm like, damn, I can't believe I'm here. I look at like, damn, I can't believe I'm not making a million dollars a month yet. <laughs> that's where I see it. Like, that's how that's my mind. Like, I'm so focused on, you know, building my family, building my my legacy yeah. to keep going forward that I really don't even have time to look back. Wow. Yeah, it's that's crazy. Powerful. That's great. That's yeah, crazy. it's like, and it's like, maybe it's something I need to do because you're always supposed to cherish what you have, but yeah. never, never get comfortable. Uh, that, that is a Facts. saying, but it's like, I don't give a fuck what I have. I just want to keep going. Yeah. You know, I want to get, I want to keep going, get bigger, go, go harder. You know, I want to, and I want to have, you know, I want to be able to go spend $75,000 on a shopping spree and not care. Right. You no. Know, can I do that now? No, I don't want to do that. And it's like, fuck, you know, I yeah, can't, yeah. you know? So it's like, I want to keep going. Nice. Never, never comfortable. And I think I just I never really look back. So is there anything you can give for the viewers or listeners? Um, any tips you can give them to, you know, kind of stay motivated? Because obviously you just told us your whole story. Yeah. Um, so what can you, what can you say to the people who are watching and listening um, to kind of keep keep them um, inspired. Yeah, the biggest, I say this every time on my Instagram as well. You can't stay consistent, stay motivated. You can't stay motivated, stay consistent. Either one is going to drive you. Right. You know, if you can't stay consistent, you need to be motivated. It's like going to the gym or, you know, having a job, whatever it is, you need to, you need to stay on that path. Yeah. And I think motivation and consistency and drive is going to have it. You know, you're, you're going to be in the right direction with that. So I think just keeping them two key at, at all time, motivation and consistency is going to get you to that level. And um, other than that, bro, I, for me, it's that's that's just what I keep. I keep them two first. Motivation, consistency. Obviously, you have family. You have a bunch of things that that come into play. But just career wise, bro, just stay consistent, stay motivated, stay consistent, and and have a purpose doing it. If there's purpose. no purpose, you're gonna quit. Like I quit music, I quit YouTube. I, mean, I had a, I had a purpose with YouTube, but if I guess ran its course, yeah. So I quit that because I just didn't want to do it anymore. But music is like a thing. Like I had no purpose doing it. I just quit it. So like you know they laugh on the side because there was no purpose, you know. <laughs> but consistent, consistency, motivation, and purpose. I think those three will drive you anywhere in life, no matter what, no matter what career path, no matter where you're going, no matter what you're doing. Because if I wasn't consistent in Forex, I would not be here. Yeah. I could have quit seven months ago, eight months ago, nine months ago, and kept doing YouTube. No, I'd stay consistent no matter how much money I lost. Yeah. I kept going and figured it out. So last question is, are we ever going to see, like, are you ever going to see a time where you actually go back to doing bike content on youtube at all obviously you're making money and so on you're doing a different i still path, do it i i upload monday wednesday and friday that's it yeah um i try to keep the brand alive as much as possible right and that's why i still do ride the dirt bikes i still do videos with my friends and i still i genuinely do have fun doing it so i i am consistent with that i have a schedule we do do that we that we, we stay on but other than that not really like i still go to the ride outs i still have fun yeah but i won't be as crazy as i used to be like you want to see me in the front of the pack doing crazy shit anymore as long as i used to I do it here and there, but I think, not, not I think right. I'm focused on building wealth. Yeah. Now, I think that's the biggest thing. For anybody, even in the bike life industry or in any, any industry, having fun is cool, but leaving that legacy is one and making sure your family straight is two. And doing when you want, with, ever, with who you want, however you want, spending as much money as you want, I think it's important. It's important yeah. more than riding a dirt bike because that doesn't pay me as much as Forex yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and creating other businesses. So um, I like to live a lifestyle. I like to, I like to feel rich. I like to, at least in the back of my mind, I like to like feel like, yo, I'm good. Yeah. And me working, that's what makes me feel good. Right. So me, I'm forever going to work. Am I forever going to ride dirt bikes? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. That's true. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. And like I said, you know, maybe if Monster come cuts me a check, then we'll make it happen, you know? Yeah, but then you're tied in. Then you got to yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I can still trade in the morning. I'm good. <laughs> you know, if, it, if, it, if it's a couple mil, you know, we'll make yeah. it happen, you know? Like I said, I want to leave that legacy and, and be rich. Yeah. So. Well said, man. Well said. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you have to go, but I want to say I thank you so much for um, taking the time to, to make this happen. If you could tell the viewers where to find you, that'd be great. Any platform? Yeah. You can find me on Instagram, bratvlogs underscore, YouTube, bratvlogs. Um, you can find our trading page if anybody's interested in, tr in trading, NPZ trading on Instagram. Um, YouTube is the same thing as well. Um, and yeah, bro, if you want to tap in with us, whether it's through the bike stuff, through the Forex stuff, through just any financial stuff, because I feel like I've been through a lot, you know, I've been through a lot, yeah. through ups and downs, how to manage money, how not to manage money. So there's a lot of things that we've, we've done that, you know, I feel like I can help, you know, so I appreciate y'all and thank you for having me, especially being yeah. the first bike life person on here. Nah, of course. We gotta get you leaky on here next, but you're in New York. Uh, I know, I know. We gotta but get I, you figure, I, I know you, so it's like. Fuck it. I'm already here. Yeah. Makes sense. No, facts. So, facts. But thank you. Thank you no so problem. much, bro. Thank you. Um, so for those of you guys who are listening and watching, 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 <laughs> listening and watching, uh, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe and yes. keep listening on all streaming platforms. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Let's get it. <laughs>